Hey folks, welcome back to the Deerskin Diary. On this episode, we're going to be talking about making a hunting shirt. Now, this is the linen hunting shirt that you've seen me wear on most of the videos. And uh, it's one that I did make myself. I've been making shirts on and off for, I don't know, the last 20 to 25 years or so. Some turn out well, some don't, but uh, this is the first time I'm going to be trying a material called Lindsay Woolsey. And we'll discuss that a little bit more in the video. It's a stripe material. Too. It has a stripe pattern on it. I've never really sewn anything with a stripe pattern before either. So it's going to be a, a bunch of firsts here uh, on the Deerskin Diary. And thanks for tuning This episode is definitely not meant to be um, all encompassing of the hunting shirt. I'd like to do a separate episode that discusses, you know, the, the, extant examples and what a hunting shirt is and most of that will be based on the research uh, done by Neil Hurst but that's going to be a separate episode for this one I just want to stick with the actual manufacturing process um, now this again is the linen hunting shirt it's got a few cool features here that this the new Lindsay Woolsey one will have so it has a cape here and this cape is a decorative uh, feature that runs along the collar here of course it I think this one's going to have uh, pleated sleeves as well so you can see where the sleeves have uh, pleating in them there to kind of make them narrow at the collar of course it will have fringe I think that's uh, almost a certain uh, uh, must for hunting shirts and uh, I'm going to put a couple of pockets on the inside I really really enjoy having pockets that I can put things in in my hunting shirt you know, getting started with this hunting shirt uh, is as easy as using Google to find um, a pattern and instructions. And what I have used for the past several is this. It's the construction of the Continental Army hunting shirt circa 1775 to 1783. And it's done by Neil Hurst, who has uh, the, the, the lion's share if you will, the research done, if not nearly all the research done on hunting shirts, uh, which are distinctly and uniquely American. Uh, from the first uh, sort of mention of hunting shirts in online accounts, or correction, from period accounts, and I believe the 1760s, don't quote me on that exactly, all the way through, um, really through the late 1780s and 1790s. Now, hunting shirts did um, continue into the early part of the 19th century, but for for most of uh, Neil Hurst's uh, information that I have found so far, it focuses on the last sort of quarter, or not last half of the 18th century. So this pattern and instructions is phenomenal, and then it kind of breaks down everything that you'll need. And uh, again, I found it on Google and, and, and printed it off, and I've used it for several hunting shirts now. We're going to use it for this one. And I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of the things we're going to need for the actual production of this hunting shirt. We mentioned the instructions before, so these are extremely important to have, coming real handy here in a little bit when we start cutting. This is the material itself. This is the Lindsay Woolsey. Now this is partially woven of linen, partially woven of wool. It's very prone to shrinkage. Normally with 100% linen, I would go ahead and uh, pre-wash this. Um, I'm not going to do it with the Lindsay Woolsey. I'm going to make sure that this hunting shirt never sees anything more than, than cold water uh, and air drying for a wash and hand washing at that. So hand washing cold water and I should expect a little bit of shrinkage potentially even with that but I don't want to. This stuff's pretty precious. It's pretty hard to come by a lot of times. Um, I've been waiting a while for this to be uh, for sale again so I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize that and I certainly um, we'll make sure that I take care of the garment later. I don't normally wash a lot of my living history stuff um, because of, of who and what I portray, so I'm not too concerned about shrinkage. Anyway, this is the, the striped Lindsay Woolsey. Now, some other things that we're going to need, a cloth tape measure, good pair of scissors, um, some thread. This is linen thread. It's a natural, actually this is kind of more of a beige color, which is similar to natural. Um, it's not the greatest match to the material itself, but it's absolutely fine for what I'm going to need it for. Now, this is 100% pure beeswax, and the beeswax um, is, is for the thread, actually. You run the thread through this beeswax, 
And, and waxing the thread, what you do is you, you kind of hold all the fibers together, the fibers of the thread. Um, you kind of encapsulate them with wax a little bit. It gets them all running the same direction a little bit more, adds possibly a little more strength, um, but it also uh, just keeps all the fibers together because as you pull that needle and thread through the material each time, you tend to, uh, the material tends to want to kind of start shedding some of those thread fibers and as you go the the thread can actually get thinner and thinner and thinner so this will help uh, hold it all together and also helps the thread move through the material a little bit easier um, of course our sewing needles here um, we're going to need some straight pins i need way more than the two that i have here but these are the two that i could find um, to show in the video the rest of them are probably in my little needle holder and then some buttons. Now these are small thread buttons. That's what I've used on my other hunting shirt. I will probably use two of these on the cuff of the hunting shirt on each cuff. And I'm, I'm likely going to try to find something a little bit larger, more stable um, for the neck portion if I don't do a tie. I could also do linen ties uh, in the neck as well. That will prevent me from having to do another buttonhole, um, which is uh those can be sporty sometimes in material that likes to fray a lot um, and that's really all that you're going to need um, in terms of tools and materials now i should say here you'll note that these tools are not um, obviously not 18th century um, i don't have 18th century sewing tools and so trying to do an 18th century uh, style video on the making of the hunting shirt was just probably meant that the video wasn't going to happen anytime soon. So I wanted to make sure, even though we're using some modern materials and stuff, that, uh, that I was able to show my production of a hunting shirt. Now, this particular material came from uh, William Booth Draper, and it's sold by the quarter yard. Um, you'll need at least three yards total to make a shirt. I think I'm about a quarter yard short, so we're going to see if, uh, if this turns out to be enough or not. We'll either have to get creative or hope that there's still some more of this fabric for sale on the website. I think uh, Burnley and Trowbridge had a version similar to this, if not this. Um, and uh, I actually just ordered some horn buttons some two hole horn buttons for the cuff and some uh, some linen tape for the neck i prefer linen tape uh, in the neck and in the body to, to tie the um the hunting shirt closed as opposed to buttons and quite honestly that's because if i'm slightly off in my measurements for the neck the tape is a lot more forgiving than uh, a button and a buttonhole or a button and a loop of of tape um, and it's just a little bit easier for me, I think, to take on and off. So uh, in just a second, I'm going to lay this out and we're going to start measuring and cutting out the different pieces. Now I've got the material laid out here. And if you notice, it's, it, again, like I described earlier, it's, it's striped. And I need the stripes in the finished product to be running from shoulder to thigh. Um, so I want the stripes running vertically. Um, with most material, you can uh, fold it over at the shoulder and it prevents you from having to do really just a few inches of a seam there. Um, but in this particular case, if I did that, then the stripes would be running horizontal and that's not what I want for, for this shirt. Um, so in order to get these running vertical, I've got to um, fold it up with this end where my old gimp leg here is at the moment being the uh, where the shoulder seams will go. The finished product here I will want uh, the stripes running vertically as opposed to horizontally and this material is actually um, it's actually narrower than most modern um, woven materials. Most modern woven materials are advertised as being roughly 60 inches wide. This one is let's see what it is actually here is more like 36 inches wide and uh, that's actually far more historically correct looms for material were typically narrower um, in the 18th and even in the 19th century the other cool part about this particular material is that the selvage edge which is the edge of the material that's sort of factory um, 
not cut but woven here this is the edge where the where the fibers uh, loop back over and then continue to run back and forth and back and forth this selvage edge is uh, is actually period correct with a lot of the modern uh, materials that are out there that selvage edge is is, is slightly different they all certainly they all have selvage edges but um, this one is actually historically correct um, so that's really drew me to this material and making a hunting shirt out of this type of material now most hunting shirts uh, at least for the direction here says you want a body that's 27 inches wide by a measurement that's just under your butt basically um, and if you were making this this hunting shirt where the uh, the fold was at the shoulder you would basically double that so think about it opened up um, 27 inches wide and opened up um, so so double the, the length um, to to handle that shoulder seam of course as I said before we can't do that with this material so we're effectively going to cut out um, two identical pieces I have found that 27 inches wide for me is just a little bit too wide so I've backed that down to 25 and the overall length um, of, of each front and back being 31 so I'm going to cut out two pieces that are 25 inches wide by 31 inches long Now here's a neat little trick I want to show you when it comes to cutting linen. So uh, my 31 inch length is measured here. And in order to get a straight cut, what I'm going to try to do is pick one of these threads out here. And I'm going to do my best to pull that thread all the way to the very end of the material. And what that'll do is give me a good straight line that I can use as a guide to cut. Now when I'm cutting the opposite direction, I've got I've already got some straight lines that I can kind of use. So I'm hedging my bets that that'll work out well. Right now what I need to do is get one of these threads pulled. As you can see, once I'm done pulling that linen thread, I've got a nice straight line to use as a guide as I cut. Okay, so as you can see here now, I've got uh, pretty much everything um, cut out of the shirt minus the cape. I'm still kind of deciding how I want to do the cape. I've got to sort of figure out with these uh, with these stripes, you know, do I want the cape to match the vertical stripes, or do I want to go a little crazy with it and do a uh, a, a cape with some horizontal stripes? And um, that's going to take a little bit of time, but it's really one of the last things that you do on this shirt. Um, so you can see, I've got the body right here. Um, these two pieces at the top up here, these are going to be the uh, the shoulder, um, kind of they act as a gusset and as a reinforcement. I've got the underarm gussets here that will fit kind of like in that shape, almost like I said before, a diamond. Um, I've got the sleeves over here and I've cut the sleeves down just a little bit. You can see they're pretty, for a sleeve, that's pretty pretty wide there um, and and so I am going to pleat these sleeves probably right about here down to the wrist and then here are the um, the actual wristbands or cuffs themselves which will be folded over and then this turned inside out so these wristbands will actually be a little bit narrower than uh, than that right there so uh, Got a little bit more work to do. I'll get the camera back on here when I'm ready. I've got to cut um, basically the, the center of the piece, of the front piece. I've got to find the center line here and cut that down the center to make a split front or open shirt and then start hemming those pieces back, hem the bottom um, down there, um, stitch the sides. I've got to stitch the shoulders across the selvage edge. So uh, now the real fun begins. And 
I'm not a tailor, but I will do my best to kind of show you how um, my philosophy on, on sewing stuff like this, it will all be hand sewn and, uh, and you can sort of see how good or bad my sewing is depending on who we're comparing to.